Welcome back to part two of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way, featuring our special guests. Now let's dive right back into the conversation and continue exploring their incredible journey. Uh, though the shadow ban, I'm really interested in the shadow ban. Is there any way you can contact Instagram? Because obviously that's a source of income and millions of people rely on Instagram as their as their business. Um, I mean, that seems a bit, it scares me that uh, somebody or a company like that can just have control over viewership without any reason at least had you violated anything on instagram how is there anybody you can contact to go hey what what on earth is going on here so usually when it comes to shadow ban you gotta figure out it figure it out yourself because we try reaching out to instagram they say there's nothing wrong with your um uh, with your account so there's nothing we can help and then we explain um, about the engagement situation, they say it's the same thing. They don't give any reason. They go, they don't give any explanations. They just say, your account is doing fine. There's nothing wrong with your account. So we can, can help you with anything. There's nothing to help here. So, hmm. well, I think there is based on my, me and uh, my wife and I, um, you know, we review the thing we share on Instagram. I think there's a post, a, you know, a, a, so we work with a, I think it's a credit card company. It's not credit card yet, I think. I forgot it's a card provider. Um, I forgot the name, but we promoted that a few times and then no longer, no longer after that, we're, we're shadow banned. I think it's because of that one, but we don't know for sure, but, um, just adding more, you know, my two cents here about Instagram. Instagram is getting more and more um, strict about the violations because sometimes even we got, um, so for example, we have our friends A, let's say A and B, B is us. So we both post the same thing. The same thing, the same, um, the same content. For A, it's okay, but for B, sometimes we can get um, reported or, or, or the content can be taken down because we violated something, but it's okay in the other page. So um, from there, we I think we get this insights that um, the, the one who take down the post is kind of like the AI that Instagram created to, you know, to check, to fact check or to, you know, to the checking of the post, whether or not the, this post or the, this content is violated the Instagram um, violations. If yes, then it will take it down. If you feels like this, um, that you doesn't violate anything, you can um, choose to like dispute this, um, dispute this so they can take it, take it back up. Because if I'm not wrong, I don't know if still this applies because uh, I ever heard of this kind of like karma point. So there is a point, a certain, it's not karma point, but let's just say it like that. So there's a certain point in on your account. Let's say you start with 100. As you violate more, your scores will go down. And then you violate more again, it goes down, goes down. And when you reach a certain point, you will get shadow banned. And then you keep going down they will disable your account. And if you do good, like you shares, you bring engagement, you bring views through Instagram, you help them keep their viewers stays longer on the Instagram app, then you will get more points. Your points will go up and then Instagram will send you more followers. So I think it works like that. And it's because we post something that Instagram don't like. I don't know if they don't like or maybe you violate some of their um, violations. This is why our points goes down and we get shadow ban. And when we are uh, our shadow bans were live like a week, maybe we did it again and we get shadow ban again. But you know the the feeling of getting shadow ban and then we live and then we get shadow ban again and then we the, the shadow ban lifted again and then we get shadow ban again is the constant feeling of you know anxious. Um, 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 before you post something, if you're really scared of getting shadow banned again. And since then, we're trying to build something out of Instagram, like really desperately, because 
we don't want to have the same feeling again to put, be put in the same position again once Instagram, you know, shadow ban you, it's over for you. And I don't want to feel like that again. That's why I was, you know, learning how to build business, um, have another business out of Instagram. So when Instagram, you know, put a shadow ban on House of Leaders again, I can, I can still think clear because I was not threatened by that situation. You get what I mean? Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yep. So how, how do you, you're in the middle of a shadow ban. What are you thinking? How you're obviously thinking how to get a shadow out of a shadow ban. Do you start, I mean, did you violate anything? Do you, do, are you told that you violated it? What, I mean, I know you suspected the, the, the company that you advertised for, but it, it, if it, it couldn't have been that later down the track because you got shadow banned again and again. Was there any map to it, any tracing, any clues that you could figure out what, what it was? I mean, were you, were you violating anything? Was anything negative? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of negativity out there anyway, isn't there? Yeah, so um, I think... I don't think we violate anything because we mm. the, the the content we post is the same as other pages as other yeah. account. They're doing good, but we're getting shadow banned. So um, where we have a uh, suspicion, a, sus, no, no, it's not sus, suspicion, but we have another theory too. Mm. Maybe our Followers don't like ads. This is why when, when we post ads, they complain by reporting us. And yeah. then um, as because we got reported, our points is going down and then we are getting shadow banned. That's not a theory. But yeah, since then, we are really, really super careful about the thing we post, like super conscious. We even rejected a lot of um, clients because of the impact we think it's going to give to House of Leaders page as a, you know, as a, as an account, because we are yeah. still on Instagram platform. Mm. So yeah, I think okay. that answers. Yeah. Yeah, no, it does. And how, how are you doing on Instagram right now then? I know obviously you, you, you're doing pretty well, I think at 1.4 million followers, but how are you doing with your insights? How, uh, no shadow ban, obviously. How's that going? It's been going great, man. So, Mm -hmm. 2019, we already hit, I think, one, 1. 1.3 million, but we never okay. hit 1.4 million. Like 2019, 2020, 2021. Yeah, yeah. We just hit like 1.4 million a few months ago. And that is yeah, really something that we celebrate in, in, in our team. Yeah. Uh, because with the shadow ban, people thought like we're gone. We are no longer there. We're no mm -hmm. longer offering um, the value they want. And mm -hmm. the, when we gain followers, um, pe more people are leaving. So we're growing really, really slow. So when the shadow band lift off, like we don't no longer get shadow band like for a whole year, we can finally start building our engagement again, engaging with people, um, giving more value, uh, experimenting on more things. Like we used to only do um, posts, feed posts, now we only we also created reels, um, story posts. We engaged with our followers, and finally we reach um, 1.4 million. Whereas yeah. our like a lot of our friends, it's already 2 million, 3 million, 4 million. We're stuck there. But yeah, there, I, I'm still grateful. Like we finally yeah. hit 1.4 million. That's that's a start. That's a great start. It's a great start, mate. And and you know, <laughs> if there was any advice you could give to us little folk, myself included, and, and people that might be listening wanting to grow a business, what kind of advice could you give them? You know, obviously, I know you, you probably charge a lot of money for this, but it, as a one-liner or a couple of sentences, what are some of the simple steps people can follow to create a good audience? It might not be 1.4 million, but you know what's relative to their to their service. What what's, what's some good advice? So the way Instagram works um, nowadays, it's different from how it were, how it was. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, the, the video you post, for example, the video you post a week ago can go viral maybe a month later. So oh, wow. if you ask me how to build a great Instagram um, account now, this year, 2024, it's just first you got to, 
consistently posting, consistently engaging with your audience. Just like, you know, make a batch of videos, like a lot of videos and then post it so you can, um, you know, post it daily. Um, yeah, and like schedule it type thing. Yeah, don't stop whatever happens. Like even you don't get any likes, any comments, any views, don't stop, keep posting. Um, you don't have to mm -hmm. post a lot in a day. You can maybe um, post one or two a day. That's enough. Mm -hmm. Try to engage as much as possible. When engage, I mean not only people who come to your page, but you go out there um, and maybe look for people that are similar audience that like you, the, the, the audience you want. Engage in their comment section. Um, engage with the people who are posting the content. Just, just you know, introduce yourself to them, collaborate with them, work with them together. And the most important thing is to be yourself. The, I see a lot of people create another persona of themselves, which is not them. Um, and then when they, you know, go go live on Instagram or connect with their audience, like something is, is different from this person, and that disconnects really fast. So just be yourself, um, engage with them. If you don't feel like, um, like for example, I. Now, I think I have a lot of things um, to work on, so I don't really um, enjoy um, kind of chatting, you know, um, because I, I, but I, I'm a really bad, I'm really bad at chatting, but it's better for me to speak like directly, um, face to face or, or on live maybe or on Zoom meetings, because it, it, it's better, you know, you can connect face to face. So yeah, completely. Um, yeah, just just create something, create a system for you on Instagram, for example, if you want to grow grow it on Instagram, create a system for you that can make you comfortable. Don't do something that yeah. you don't like. Yes, you will stop anyway in the middle. So just do something yeah. that you like. Be yourself. Keep posting. Connect with people out there. Collaborate with people. Oh, I think I want to share something about collaboration though. Um, I want to add something. So please, I've been doing this for years before I finally realized what is it that I'm doing. Have you ever heard of Coelevate? Coelevate? Yeah. No, I haven't. So the word Coelevate um, is created by Keith Frazzi. So I got the chance to interview Keith Frazzi. He's an amazing um, leader. So co-elevate is the next level of collaboration because the ethos, the ethos of co-elevate is going higher together. So you work together yes. without asking for something in return. Because when you collaborate with, with, with other person, there's something, you have to get something like value for mm. value. But co-elevate, yeah. um, like I know I see like, oh, Andrew is doing this because you want to get here. And I feel like I can support him. Then I go support him. Um, I just realized when I talked to Keith Frazzi, when I, I got the chance to interview him, I've been doing this like the whole time. That's why when I needed help, a lot of um, friends from House of Leaders came to me and helped me, you know, run the client for me when, um, while we still, we, we still can take the revenue and, you know, run our business and pay back later when um, we can. So, um, so the concept is like this. That time, whenever our friend needed our help, like, can you post for these clients? Because I'm really full. I, you know, I was biting more than what I can chew. I shouldn't take mm. this client, but can you post this client for me? Can you post it, this ad for me? We'll post it for them. And, um, and then uh, we are not asking anything in return. We just want to help. If you need, Amazing. if we need anything in the future, maybe we will find you, but we will not, uh, will not ask for anything for now because we don't need it. We will just help you. And we did this to a lot of people that time. Like if you needed help, we'll do it for you. Um, I still remember doing a lot of, I think a few posts for Jim Quick, people like Jim Quick, um, Tom Bilyeu, like people like them. And I think, you know, the cycle is, um, you know, the, I think the wheel is going back and when we needed help, they came back to me and they helped us. 
So I think the concept of co-led vision is really amazing. And I even apply this to my um, to the team of House of Leaders where, so for example, there is the um, creative team and there is the, um, let's say the operational team. So whenever, let's say the creative team is, um, have a lot of things to do and they're like, you know, cannot get to the, like get kind of finish things before the deadline and then we have someone in operational team who is also creative, who also knows how to design posters or um, or edit video, for example, they will simply over help because the the purpose is we want to get this done so we can post in our house of leaders, so we can serve more people, we can give more value. He, this the, the, this person, the team in, in operational team, want to give value, right? So we are going higher together. So by me helping you create this, edit this content, um, you know, create this posters, design this thing, we can give more value. Then my, this team in operational team will just, hey man, can I, is there anything I can help you? Like, like let's get this done. So there's Amazing. no like walls anymore because we are co-elevating yeah. to go higher together, which is really amazing concept. More people should be like that, right? Agreed. More, more people. I feel, I, I, maybe we're co-elevating. I feel like you're massively, you know, being a part of my journey just by appearing on the podcast, you know? Um, and I think a lot of people will get a lot of learning just from that segment alone if they're going into business. And that's what I love about it because you do have an individual journey, which we'll get into why you're doing what you're doing shortly. But this business lesson is fantastic for people uh, who want to go down that line. So many facets to this episode. I love it. Absolutely fantastic. Um, if you don't know anyone who can make a good trailer, do you brilliant? Cause that's what I'm looking for right now. <laughs> 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 anyway, I'm only joking. Uh, but I am looking for somebody to make me a trailer. Uh, I am struggling. I'm, I've been diving into editing program. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm not creative in the slightest. Anyway. Um, so that's amazing. No, I love that. I love that term co-elevate. I'm going to be using that in the future myself. That's absolutely fantastic. Okay. Um, so we've got a bigger picture about house of leaders. Now, how many are currently on the team in your, in your team right now? Including me and my wife. I think we have like, we are seven. Wait, wait. Yeah. Um, yeah, we are seven people, including me Beautiful. and my wife. Yeah, yeah, and we'll we'll talk about the future of House of Leaders at the end of episode because I think that's uh, you've got some great plans in place that I'm aware of. Um, people will be able to see it on uh, Instagram with the communities that you are created. I've even signed up my email just so you know. Um, but go, I, I love the story. Uh, before we dive deep, no, actually, no, we'll put a pause on that. I was gonna go. I was gonna go somewhere. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's go to your childhood. Talk to me about your childhood because you have mentioned several times in this episode about connection, being yourself, being authentic, being just you. You didn't, you, I, I have a sense from our previous conversation that wasn't the case for you as a child. Talk to us a little bit about um, your, your education, schooling, uh, and, and, and family life. Where should I start? Hmm. So, okay. I think let's start from my name. I think my name I'm... is, yeah, sorry. No, I was going to comment. I, when I first, when we first communicated uh, and you messaged me that, my initial reaction, maybe it's my mindset, my positive mindset. I just loved it. I thought it was absolutely part of my pun. Thank absolutely you. Absolutely brilliant. Like seriously, uh, there was more of a reason for me to connect with you. <laughs> anyway, carry on. So I think I want to start this um, this story, uh, this with a kind of funny story. I think yeah, it's it's it, it's it's funny for me. So it's a cute story actually. So I <laughs> I had this friend of mine um do you know addicted success on instagram do what sorry um a, a, a page called addicted to success it's run by joel brown is i think it's from australia too oh no I'll, I'll have to check that out 
I'll, I'll I'll type it in now as we, as we're on the thingy. What what was it? What was it called again? Addicted to success. Addicted to two. success. It's two number two. Yes, got it. Yeah. So um, it's owned by Joel Brown. So mm-hmm. like we've been good friends and we've been working together since House of Breeders is really small page. Um, so long story short, two to three years later, Joel invited me to speak in one of his event in Bali. Um, so he asked for, well, he always calls me Liu. He never calls me brilliant. Okay. okay. Um, and then one day he invited me to the event and then he asked for my passport because he wanted to book a plane for me. And then I sent me, I sent him my passport and then he says, Oh, your name is actually brilliant. I thought you called yourself brilliant because most of oh. Asian in, 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 in um, maybe U, U.S. or, um, I don't know if Australia or so, um, they created a name for themselves. Wow. Because they don't have like a name like, you know, they only have a Chinese name where, you know, yeah. um, it's on Mandarin. So, yeah. yeah. And it's funny um, because I thought, uh, <laughs> I thought you don't want to call me brilliant. So you just thought of that. So I was yeah. like thinking negative all the time because I was really critis- um is it the word criticize? No, no, no. Criticize, I was critical yeah. Yeah. about myself. Like I was super, super critical. I was always judging myself. Um, am I good enough? Um, what about what 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 if people think I'm stupid? Like I don't deserve to be on the stage or something like that. So, but that's that that's um a story. But talking about my name, I used to hate my name because it's it's really it's not an easy name to live by to grow to grow up with. Um. For example, I used to be um, bullied by especially teachers. When it comes to the name, most people um, who give me big impact is the teachers, um, like the lecture in like lecturing professors when I was um, in the college or the teachers when I was in school. Well, it's just a simple. I know, I totally know they're joking when they say something like. I thought you doesn't were brilliant. Matter, does it? You, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I thought you were. Yeah. I thought you were brilliant. You are supposed to be doing better than this, and then they laugh. But that gives me the impression like I'm not good enough. And then um, one of my teachers in school, high school, actually says, um, you know, when he gave me um, this this um, the exam paper, um, I think I got like. Um, just you know, just 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 good enough to pass score, and then he says, "This course is not brilliant. This course is just the average score. So starting from now, I'm just calling you average until you get enough a, a better score. Then I'll call you brilliant." That time I was thinking like, um, okay, but I I'm not good at good academically. I I'm really bad at school. I don't like learnings. I started loving, love to learn new things. Um, I think when I hit, when I was 21 years old, but before that, I hate learning. I hate schools. So it was a really why. Yeah, hard name to live, to grow up with. Like every mm-hmm. single person you meet expect you to be brilliant. Until one day, I was, um, I think in 2019, 2018, 2019, or 2020, around around that time, I realized that only then I realized I may not be brilliant at school. I may not be brilliant at a lot of things, but I'm brilliant at badminton. I'm brilliant at building house of leaders. I give a lot of values. I'm brilliant at speaking if I, you know, train myself to be one. Like, I'm brilliant at being myself. Like, I don't have to really be brilliant at, you know, a lot of um, what people expect me to be brilliant. I just, can't, I just have to be myself and be brilliant at, you know, yeah. what I can be brilliant at. And then also, I used to be really um, overweight and 
my nose is drooling. So I, I was looked down when I was primary. And my mom divorced twice. So I had a big trauma on my... Um, like, I still remember uh, until even after this time. I was so confused as, as a child. That time, I was like five, six years old. Um, so I was in school. That was primary one, I think. Yeah, pri- primary one. So I, I often see my mom cry at home, but I don't know why. I only see her cry. I remember it vividly, but I don't ask because I don't know what to say. And then I remember one time in school, my mom was rushing over um, to look for me, but the teachers was, you know, pulling me into the principal's office and then locked the door so my mom can reach out to me. That time, I totally don't understand why. I, I don't understand, like, why do you, why can't, why I cannot meet my mom? Why are you pulling me back from my mom? What did my mom did for? And then, but that time I was staying at my dad's home, I think. Wait, wait, I think the story is, oh, no, 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 no not yet. But and then, no longer after that, my mom successfully bring me to his home, new home. It's not my dad's home. And then long story short, um, I saw my mom um, almost kill herself. Like he was... Um, Using like, I don't know, like, um, you know, uh, something sharp from the nail clippers. And then he was like, you know, scratching um, her hands. I was really afraid uh, that she, time. She, uh, she was doing that herself to herself. Yeah. And, and it's, it was all blood. And then I was shouting, um, shouting my, I think, helpers in my house to stop her. And no longer after that. My dad bring police to uh, my mom's, um, you know, he, he ran, she ran the house in the place, the, the place I stay, um, bring police to there and then bring my, me and my twin brothers to, um, to his home, a smaller one. It's not the original home. Um, since then, we live with my dad. I never see my mom anymore. And then... Mm-hmm. Well, my, so we live with my dad, my grandma, and my, 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 my dad's big brother sell, uh, often visit the house. And I think he's real, he's kind of rude, I think. So whenever I was really naughty as a kid, I was a naughty kid. I like to talk back. So whenever I talk back, uh, my, Dad's big brother will like you know slap me really hard. That my I think I have I used to have a really bad infection in my ear until was like um I think it was secondary five or six like um it it goes um better like I never had any problem with that anymore. But as a child, it's really hurtful. So. Like I was living in a physically abusive um, situation back then. Did Did and... your dad know about that happening? Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.